Welcome, welcome, one and all. Winter Wizard here. And in this video, I'm going to be turning a Lucas the Trickster into a wolf priest. joining me today whoever you are and welcome to this little conversion tutorial of mine where I'm going to be turning a Lucas the Trickster model into a into a wolf priest. It's cold and lonely here in Winter Wizard's Frozen Fortress but it's a, it's a beautiful sunny day out there. I've got a, I've just finished a nice cup of coffee it's just gone midday and I'm joined as always by my friend and co-host Norwegian Troll Dimu so this is gonna be nice. So if you weren't aware, I've, I've got a Space Wolves army, they're called the Great Company of Frostpaws. And um, I've decided to, with the, with the three main characters of the army, to sort of take a little bit of inspiration from Norse mythology. So the Jarl is uh, inspired by Thor. I've got a Rune Priest, uh, which I use a Njarl Stormcaller model, and he's inspired by sort of the wise Odin. And uh, so I wanted to do sort of a, a, a Loki inspired character and I thought well what better to do what better role for that person than a, than a wolf priest uh, so a sort of um, spiritual guide a um, bag of tricks in it in his own right so I was looking for a model of how to represent a Loki inspired wolf priest and well what better model indeed than the trickster himself Lucas the trickster now, I absolutely love this character in the law um, the Lucas the trickster novel if you haven't read it is, is one of my absolute favorites it's really really brilliant um, so Lucas he's a he's a wonderful character and he has this um, he has a sort of low-key mischief uh, mischievous appearance about him so I so I wanted him to be my wolf priest and that's what we're gonna do today we've got um, we've got a space wolves upgrade upgrade sprue here not the not the primaris nonsense but the uh, the old school stuff and got the bits for Loki um, for Lucas here so we're going to be thinking about how to do this today and that's the point of this video you're going to get to see my sort of thought process I've already sort of made a little bit of a plan of what I want to do but I'm going to run through it with you explain it all as we go and uh, I'm going to put them together right here right now in front of you so hope you enjoy and uh, we'll see what you think so we've zoomed in here and first thing that I like to do when I take on any kind of little conversion project or anything like that is to just take a moment to uh, have a little drink of coffee and meditate upon how, how exactly we're going to tackle this. So this is what the model looks like and the beauty of this is that he has a plasma pistol. Now a wolf priest you can equip with a plasma pistol so I'll be doing that. That was the plan. And, um, but he has this, this big sort of power fist claw type arm. And that's going to need to go because wolf priests require Crozius Arcanum, so that's gonna it's gonna be on a normal sized arm, so the whole arm is gonna need to go. So, so how are we gonna do that? So I've got all of Lucas's bits here, and there's a plasma pistol, a base, and I've got thrown away the arm, and I've got a frost sword arm here. It's a it's a left arm, which is perfect. Uh, this is from one of the pack, the Space Wolf pack boxes, I believe. And so that's going to go on. That's going to go nicely, I think. And it's in. It's quite a nice sort of. Quite a nice sort of position as well. The arm is sort of like slung back. Type position as he is, because the model itself is kind of lurching forwards. He's got his plasma pistol sort of strewn out, like so. And so with this arm swinging back as he's running, wielding his crozius. I think that's going to look quite nice. So this is the arm we're going to use. So the question is how to get a crozius on the end of this thing. Well, so we're going to have to get rid of the the sword, the sword blade, and the guard here. But I'm thinking what we can do is we could keep the handle. And that's going to save us a bit of work. That way we won't need to like put a handle on both sides because I'm thinking what I've got is here. I've got a Space Wolves upgrade sprue here. And on this sprue, there's this, uh, well, this nice axe. It's got this nice smooth handle here, isn't it? This sort of smooth shaft there. And I think that's going to do well. And the beauty of this little pack is it's got these two pieces in here. 
as you can see, I'll just zoom in and give you a good look at that. It's got these two sort of icons here. These two sort of ornamental, sort of ornate Space Wolf things. And they seem absolutely perfect for, for the head of a Crozius. Really do. I think I might have seen, um, had a few look, little looks online of uh, other people doing these conver doing some kind of wolf priest conversions, and I've seen a couple of people use this one here. But I quite like the look of this one up top. Uh, the skull, the wolf skull, very reminiscent of a wolf priest, and it's got these like these wolf paw type icons as well, and that ties in really nicely with the sort of ideology and the uh, the sort of thematics of. Of the frost balls, the black fingers that they have, and so there we go. That's going to be perfect. So I'm reckon that a combination of this shaft here on this axe with that on top, that's going to look like a real nice crozius, I think. So that's the plan. So that'll be Lucas with his arm, like so what we just talked about with the crozier sticking out here got some nice shoulder pads on here so we can stick one of those on one's up up there and then we'll put his, his cape and his pistol together and this should be quite straightforward actually nice and easy so the first thing we're going to do we're going to clip all these pieces off got my trusty clippers here and get all these off clean them up so we've got the top of the crozier here and we need this axe. One of those. We'll need one of these shoulder pads, but uh, I'll leave it on there for now. We'll choose one of those in a bit. And so the axe itself, what we're going to do is we need to remove the move, remove the shaft just above the hand here. So the way we're going to do that. Is I'm gonna just clip through the hand itself. Just being careful as you put apply pressure, it's gonna slip. So we don't wanna we don't wanna ruin that axe, but like so, just to work with that a bit better. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my my sharp hobby knife here. Where that guard is. I'm gonna just work the knife into there very gently. There we go. Well, that's that removed. I'm gonna do the same principle with the sword here. I'm just gonna snip this off around right about there. And that should give us a nice bit to work with. We can get the knife and we can tidy that up. Let's get all the excess bits around the edges off. Smooth that up. What we want to do is we want to make sure we get that a nice flat surface for gluing the shaft of the crozius onto. The join is going to be important. And that should be okay. So the beauty of plastic glue is that it will melt the two pieces together and it'll fuse them. So normally plastic, if you do it right and if you let it dry nicely, then it should form a really nice strong bond actually. And there we go. So we've got that. The hand and the crozier's shaft. I'm going to stick those together like so. And that should look good. But before we work at sticking the shaft of the crozier's onto the hand, we're going to get rid of the axe head up here. So, just take that little bit off there. And it's always good to sort of make sure that you always clip more than you need just to make sure that you get you, know, you don't spoil the bit that you want so I'm going to clip in there like so 
And there we go, that's giving us a nice... That'll give us a nice piece to stick top onto. Tidy that up. If you've got a file, or you can just use the knife just to... just to smooth that out, tidy that up. And at this point we can get rid of any any mold lines, anything like that. You can see there's a nice one on the shaft of this. So if you've got a mold line remover or a file, or if you want to just use the edge of the blade. Just work that away, nice and gently. We've got a file here, we're going to tidy up the top of the... Uh, tidy up all the little bits on the top of the cruzius. A little bit on the bottom there. We can get that away with a knife, I think. Make sure you be really careful with sharp objects, of course. There we are. It's looking nice and neat. There we go, so we've got three pieces ready to make the crozius. So just make sure that all the joins, all the bits that are going to be stuck together, like the grip here, to the shaft there, to the top here, Make sure all the pieces are nice, all the joins are nice and smooth, flat, so it's going to stick nicely. And then once we're ready, once we're, once we're feeling happy with it, we're going to stick them together. So uh, we're going to get some plastic glue out here and, and work on that. So we've got our plastic glue here. And first thing we're going to do is we're going to stick the shaft to the, to the handle there, I reckon. So... Plan your positions, work out where you want it to go, work out what's going to fit well, what's going to look good, you know, before you ever do anything like this. And so, once you're happy, a little bit of glue. It's important not to go overboard with the glue. Just a little bit, just enough. I'm going to put a little bit on both sides here, just to get the plastic melting nicely. Once it starts to melt, we're going to stick these together. So get it together first. You can then quickly manipulate it to the position that you want. That's going to look good to you. So that's looking pretty okay to me. Just as it's drying, what I'm going to do, I'm going to keep an eye on it. Just to make sure that it's drying nice and straight. As the plastic starts to melt, you might find that it might suddenly flop to one side or something like that. But that's looking alright. You see it's a little bit wonky that way. So I'm gonna I'm gonna keep an eye on this for a second. Make sure that it's drying nicely. In a position that I like. And we're gonna let it set, and then we'll put then we'll put the top on. So there's the crozius, it seems to be drying and settling nicely, nicely, and I'm pretty pleased with it, I think, so far. I think that looks pretty good. I wasn't quite sure what a crozius was supposed to be when I first, um, when I first heard about them. It's um, supposed to be like a, a club or a mace, you know, sort of old medieval sort of, sort of war mall or a mace or something like that, so very nice indeed. I wouldn't want to be hit by that. Uh, yeah, so I think I'm, I'm pretty pleased with that. Pretty happy with that. So the next thing we're going to do, we're going to, we're going to stick Lucas on his base here. Well, I say Lucas, I uh, should be calling him by his, by his proper name. We're not putting a Lucas the Trickster model together. We're putting together Floki Firemane, Wolf Priest of the Great Company of Frostpaws. So we're going to put Floki on his base here. So we've got a bit of super glue there. And I've got a bit of activator here too. So resin to plastic. Uh, if you know a better way of, of sticking it together than super glue, please put that in the comments below. Uh, but it's, super glue has always been the way I've been known to do it. So what we're going to do, we're going to put some Nice big blobs on here. Stick that on. So put some nice dollops of glue on the base here. Maybe a little bit too much, but uh, 
We want it to be a nice strong join. So we're going to get him into a position that we think is going to look good. And hold that steady. Give it a little spray with the, with the activator there. See that works. There we go. Well, that should do it. There we are then. So I'm very much aware that I put quite a lot of glue there. Um, but you can see it's sort of building up. Sort of a nice build up of residue under his feet there. It's going to give him a little bit of support. I want that to be really sturdy, really strong. Uh, super glue, when it dries, is actually quite brittle. Uh, so if, if you drop the model, it can be quite prone to snapping. So I've built... <sighs> So I built it sort of a nice sort of chunky build of residue under there and the activator will make that dry straight away so it's it's really really useful tool. It looks quite messy at the moment but it's obviously we're going to cover that with some paint, paint and some texture and then a fair bit of snow as well. well there we go so we've got a nice sturdy join there and he's ready for his he's ready for the rest of his bits and we're going to go for the plasma gun next, stick it out like so, like he's running, shooting ahead of him. But you know what I've been thinking is, because um, I want to make I want to make Floki nice and unique here. I'm thinking I'm not actually hugely enamoured by by the shoulder pauldron, you know. And on the upgrade sprue, there's some really really nice ones on here. It's nice and unique. So what I'm thinking I might do actually is to take this pauldron off just to cut it away um, could be a bit fiddly what I really don't want to do is spoil the arm as I'm doing it but you know um, you've got to be ambitious with these sort of things I think so so I'm gonna have a little go at doing that now just gonna have to very carefully try and sort of cut it away somehow this all seems to be one piece of resin, so just take it a little bit at a time. Resin's very soft, you can only get get through it very easily. So I'm just gonna sort of carefully try and work this away. Sort of scraping the edges of of it off. Trying to leave that sort of, trying to leave this sort of area or that kind of shape left to it to stick another pauldron onto. So I'm just, I'm thinking here and just sort of taking my time, sort of scraping a bit off at a time, sort of working that down to a sort of smaller shape and size. And uh, when we get to in here, just going to come at it from this way and make sure that I'm cutting away from the rest of the piece because we don't want to slip and spoil the sculpt. There we go. So I'm just going to very carefully kind of scrape this away and figure this out. And I'll show you how we get how we've gone on. There we are then. So I've scraped most of that away. Just nice and carefully, nice and gently. Seems to have done the trick. It's not, um, it's going to be covered up so it doesn't matter if it looks a bit jagged or scruffy. That'll do the trick. Just making sure we've still got our nice, nice flat smooth edge here. Just flat smooth surface for gluing it onto the model. So let's think about gluing it on now. So we've got a super glue on our activator back here. Looking at the uh, at the model, it's got this triangle piece which slots into this little gap here. So that should fit nicely together. And I was contemplating maybe putting the gun in a different position, but I quite like that actually. I quite like the way he's, he's, he's running forwards. Pistol drawn. And there's a very nice plasma pistol relic in the Space Wolves Codex. And I want I want to use that, that relic for this pistol. So I want the pistol to be a nice feature. Nice famous weapon. So I'm going to just stick that as it as in as it's intended. 
Take a little bit of the super glue, put that on here. Put that on the arm first, I think, like so. And what you can do with the activator is it will work really, really quickly. So if you spray it onto the glue and then try and stick it together, uh, like so, you know, spray it onto here and then try and place it on the model. What will probably happen is it will sort of already start to dry and it won't set nicely. But what you can do, you could just place it onto the model and maybe try and spray around it. That should probably do the trick. Or you can spray it onto the model with this. You're going to have to work quickly because this evaporates quite, quite swiftly. But spray it onto the model with the glue already on the piece you're intending to glue. And then steam them together like so. So I'll do that. Show you how, how that works. Spray a bit onto the model. Then... Place the glue piece on, and jobs are good. Like so. So we've got the arm with the crozier to glue on, and we've got one of those little triangle pieces on here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut that away. You could use your clippers for this, just to snip that off, and then finish up, tidy it up with the knife or a file, whatever you're more comfortable with. And they're nice and smooth. So positioning for the crozier, so I'm thinking I was a bit unsure what to do. It's, it could look quite nice with him with his arm up. Maybe, maybe. Um like so. So or as he's running, maybe with his arm down. His crozier's flicked out to the side. Could look quite cool. So I'm going to have a little think about this. See where I want to put it. So I've decided uh, I quite like the idea of the um, Crozius being down to the side actually as he's running. And what I've done is I've sort of shaved the shape of the uh, of the arm shoulder join just to get it a bit more comfortable with where I want it to go. And then this time when we glue it, I'm actually going to put the glue. Put the glue on this part of the model first. I'm not going to do the little trick with the activator just yet. I'm going to stick, put this together, and make sure that I'm really happy with the join, uh, with the position of the join first. So I think, like there, I think. I think that looks quite cool as he's running. I'm going to try and hold it there until it's grips just enough for me to be able to let go. Should take a minute or so. Like that I think. And then if you can get your hands away without it moving too much, we can give it a little spray with the activator around the edge. And that should do it. And there we go. So uh, I gave it a little spray around the edges with the activator as well. I think that looks all right. I think I'm happy with that. Yeah. So we're going to roll with it. Um, who knows? Maybe I'll change my mind. But we're going to roll with it for now. Uh, I think I'm pretty happy so far. So we're going to think about getting some shoulder pauldrons on here. And then we're going to think about putting the cape on. And then Floki will be ready for painting. So the pauldrons, we've got some really lovely choices here. Um, I'm quite drawn towards this one at the top because he's supposed to be a wolf priest and I'm thinking this for his right hand side shoulder and that's going to be the, sh the side that's going to sort of be his insignia so it's got this lovely nice wolf's head I haven't seen any other pauldrons quite like this one in my collection so I think that'll be perfect for the job of wolf priest and then on the right hand side, uh, on the left hand side I quite like um, quite like this one with the talismans the teeth and stuff but I also like this one quite like these these bolts these studs in it they're quite nice these rivets and he's also got uh, one of those little um, quite similar to on his on his crozier's there those little poor sigil token things he's got one of those there so I'm, I think I'll do that as well so let's get these clipped off and cleaned up ready for sticking on this is the 
One for the left side. For the right side, rather. Uh, which will be easy to see here. And yeah, I'm going to go for this one down here. Now, this one I'm going to paint. Uh, this is going to be his, uh, his company markings on this one. And so I actually don't want that, that wolf's head sigil on it. So I'm going to show you how to get rid of that right now. So we've got the pauldron here, I've cleaned it up a little bit and I want to get rid of this, this wolf sigil here. I want a nice smooth flat surface to paint on for my company markings. Uh, the best way I know of doing this is again just with a very very sharp knife and being extremely careful. You know these are scalpels, they, which is why they they are so good at cutting. Your, at cutting uh, is to just very carefully just work this design away. I'm just gonna really gently just taking my time. Right, so having literally just said that, well I've accidentally gone and poked myself with the knife and uh, made a cut, so, but not to worry. Uh, Dimu is the first aid trained designate here at the Frozen Fortress, so put a plaster on it and all is well. But this is why you've got to be careful um, and really take your time with this. So you don't have to use a knife if you don't want to, you could use a file. Uh, a file to work that detail away but there's no reason why you can't use a knife if you're just a bit careful so I'm just very gently working and scratching that detail away and what we do is get most of it away scratch it away and then we can finish it off with the file Smarting it up, knitting it up. But that seems to be working nicely, so we're just scratching that off. I'm almost using sort of the edge of the knife as well. You can hear it scratching away, like so. So I'm going to finish this off. Hopefully we won't have any more accidents for Demu to fix. And, and then we'll move on. There we go, so there's the shoulder pauldron all smoothed out with that design taken away. And we've got a nice smooth surface to, to paint our own company markings onto now. There we go, and just a combination of uh, being very careful with a knife and finishing off with a file. And there we go, nice and smooth. So we're going to start sticking these onto Floki now. So we'll start with the right hand side one. I'm just going to display his wolf priests icons and we'll put some glue on there nice blob of that and stick this on get a little bit of activator in that gap in there and I should get just enough of it to be able to hold it still and there we go so is that one done and we'll stick the other one on as well and there's the other one. I did end up actually cutting off that little bit that was dangling down, that little orna ornamental bit. Bit of a shame, but it was, uh, it was sort of getting in the way and for the for the plate to sit, sit more comfortably and more naturally, just snip that little bit off, but never mind. I can always uh, stick some totems onto some other parts of the pauldron. But there we go, those are them. And then next thing we're gonna do, try and get this cape on. So we've got an interesting plot twist for you now, and maybe you saw this coming, but that's that the cape ain't going to fit back on, because we've, from the way that we position these arms and how the pointiness of some of these pauldrons, we've, it ain't going to fit on properly. And I was contemplating, thinking about a solution and then just pretending like this never happened and just filming the rest of the video but you know what I'm gonna own up to this and show you this is what can happen um, so this is why you should always plan ahead and 
think about every little step when you're making a conversion. Think about how every little bit is going to affect the next step and the next step. Um, however, not to worry. So I'm going to stop the camera. I'm going to work out what we're going to do about this. And we're going to finish this model. Right, so I've had a cup of tea and uh, I've had a little bit of a think about this. And I've got a couple of ideas. So these, these totems, these ornate things on the bottom of his crozius here, the rune and the tooth, uh, they are very nice. And I may try and get something else to decorate that. But at the moment, they are very much in the way of stopping this cape from getting in there. So I'm going to clip those off. They're going to go. Um, and this pauldron as well. It's very nice as it was. Well, well, you know what? I still really want to keep it. I really like that. I like the the wolf's head thing as the sigil of his, you know, of his priesthood. Um, so we could maybe get that round the on the other shoulder, perhaps. Get rid of that wolf. Have the company markings on on this pauldron on that side swap them around because at the moment that top is also making the cape quite difficult but it might not be necessary uh, what I'm going to do is first I'm going to get rid of those little bits I'm going to get rid of those we'll see where that takes us right so I clipped the things off the bottom of the of the crozius there left a little bit one of the little rings there in case I want to stick anything else on it and it has pained me to do it but I've managed to just get like a little file underneath there and just lift that just snap that pauldron back off and that's the beauty of super glue you see uh, it'll, um, it becomes brittle it doesn't melt the stuff like plastic glue will so we've managed to just snap that off and that's all right it's not harmed the model at all so we're gonna have a look at this and there we can see now that that is going to sit very nicely so those bits on the crozius they did get in the way and so we need to get a pauldron in there that's not going to be too big so we're going to go back to the drawing board back to the sprue and have a little look at our pauldrons again right so i went back to the upgrade sprue found another pauldron and i've stuck it on there we are this one did have a little decorative sort of thing on top which i've uh, cut off smoothed off with a knife and stuff I went for this one because it's got those studs so it kind of matches the same as the other one and I'm thinking them studs they do look quite they remind me uh, of a sort of knight sort of medieval feudal sort of kind of feel so and that kind of blends in quite well with the chaplain I think with the wolf priest so I think they make him look quite mean to be honest so I'm quite happy with them actually there we go and you can see I've put a little wolf tail talisman on the bottom of on the butt of the uh, crozius there so it's, which, I, which I, I quite like actually crozius has got a crozius has got a sort of tail on it I think that works quite well and I did all that checking checking the cape as I went along so as we put the cape on that should all sit rather nicely actually and that talisman sits in there as well just like so doesn't get in the way it looks quite nice so I'm gonna fix the cape on and we're gonna wrap this up and finally there we go then so there is Floki Firemane Wolf Priest of the great company of Frostpaws with his Crozier's Arcanum there his uh, shoulder pauldrons and his cape fixed on. <laughs> it's been a been an interesting one. This tutorial we've had uh, we've, mistakes were made. We've had bad injuries and plot twists and but I quite enjoy that. You know, uh, I, I enjoy that part of the conversion work that I get up to. Uh, I enjoy the puzzly aspect of it, trying to figure out, trying to figure out how to make it work and and. Such is the nature of warfare and survival. One must adapt. So, there we go. I hope you've enjoyed that. Uh, that is Floki Firemane, ready for painting and soon to be ready for war.
Ah, oh, and there we have it then. So that was the tutorial for how to turn Lucas the Trickster into a wolf priest. If you've enjoyed the video today, if you, if you enjoy my work, then a like and a comment would be very, very much appreciated. And if you'd like to see more of what goes on here inside the Frozen Fortress, then perhaps you'll also consider becoming a subscriber. And once again, whoever you are, thank you very, very much for joining me today. I'm Winter Wizard, that's Dimu, and for now, keep it frosty.